Hello, I am Professor Stephen Abbott and in this series I will be using HSPIP to illustrate some of the power of Hansen solubility parameters. In this clip we use a deliberately amusing technique for measuring the Hansen solubility parameters of polyisoprene rubber, also known as balloons. Even the best life science demo can go wrong in many ways and as you will see in a moment my demo definitely had some issues. But it was good fun doing it, and it makes a serious point. So let's watch my live determination of the HSP of polyisoprene, and then we'll discuss the results when we finish the video. Using an idea from my colleague, Dr. Hiroshi Yamamoto, I want to measure the HSP of polyisoprene using the classic sphere technique. But as I can't buy in some polyisoprene, I don't have a laboratory at the moment because this is the vacation and I only have my kitchen table. I'm going to do it by a more imaginative way. The results will be the same, it's just a bit more fun this way. I have some polyisoprene and I test it with some chemicals. The first chemical is some water. And of course I pour it over, the water does nothing. So I can say that the polymer, the polyisoprene, is not happy in water, so I give it a zero. What about some glycerol? There's some glycerol. This makes a bit of a mess, but I have my wife's permission. The glycerol does nothing. What about ethanol? I don't have pure ethanol, but I have some strong gin. Bit of a waste, but this is all in the name of science and the ethanol does nothing. What about acetic acid? I have some Suffolk acetic acid. I live in Suffolk. It's the finest acetic acid. And nothing happens. What about a real chemical? Acetone. Remember, I'm doing this at home, but this is nail polish remover, so it's perfectly safe if I use it according to the instructions, which I am. So here's some nail polish remover and it doesn't do anything. Now that is the unsafe nail polish remover. This is the safe nail polish remover which uses ethyl acetate. And the only difference is the aroma is rather sweeter. What about dodecane? Well I don't have dodecane but I have some lamp oil that has a safety top which was defeating me. Now I put some lamp oil on. And that seems to do nothing at all. What about cineol? This is eucalyptus oil. Which is mostly made up of cineol. It actually spread and popped my backup balloon. So that was more exciting than I imagined. So glycerol is zero, ethanol is zero, acetic acid is zero, acetone is zero, ethyl acetate is zero, dodecane is zero, cineol is definitely a one. What about limonene? Now, I don't have pure limonene, but I do have a fresh lemon, and I take off the peel, and I point it at the balloon, and squeeze it. I'm not very good at this, or maybe I'll just put it on the balloon. Maybe I'll touch it with the balloon, or maybe I have the worst lemon in the world. This worked very well when Hiroshi was doing it. Well, believe me, we have a YouTube video where it works with limonene. That's the problem with live science. Finally, I have some toluene. I, I am aware that toluene is not safe. I had some stored safely in the outhouse. I've got a tiny amount here. 
I'm going to use it very sparingly. And there's no doubt the toluene does a good job. Now I've unexpectedly run out of balloons. I could have tried some olive oil, but I know from previous experiments that that doesn't work either. So we have cineol, limonene, toluene are okay, and glycerol triolate olive oil I know is a zero. So, we had this set of chemicals, and we know that the score was zero for water, zero glycerol, zero ethanol, zero acetic acid, zero acetone, zero, one, 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 and zero. So those are our scores. We know that the polyisoprene is happy. Well, with the balloon it was unhappy because it exploded, but the polymer and the solvent were very compatible, which made it explode. So those are the good solvents, so those are, those are the bad solvents. So when we click this, we get this sphere. It's not a very good one, but it tells us the HSP of polyisoprene is something like 17.4, 2.8, which isn't bad. But I have some late breaking news, literally. I'd been puzzled by the dodecane result and had a fresh balloon and put on the lamp oil. And as in the video, nothing happened. I was a bit disappointed. I walked away and then suddenly there was a bang and actually it went after a few minutes. So dodecane is very slow. That means it doesn't deserve a one, it deserves a two. Not very good, but it's still okay. Now if I click this, I get the same result because I'm only letting those things which are called a one be defined as good and everything else is bad. But if I say that twos are also acceptable and refit, then I get a different sphere. Clearly it's bigger because I've relaxed the criteria. I'm accepting not very good solvents and the result hasn't changed too much. The DH has gone down a bit. So we now know that the HSP of polyisoprene is somewhere between the really good results and the not so good results. Of course in a real lab you'd have more chemicals, you'd have more accuracy, and often you would do this with a robotic system with high throughput so you could get a lot of data in a short time. But the point is that even something as simple as a bunch of balloons and solvents available in the kitchen is good enough to get a pretty reasonable estimate of the HSP of a polymer like polyisoprene.